All right, Ted Black, let's talk West Virginia Breeders Classics. Cavada, the seven furlong race for fillies and mares, the top race for the distaff set on the WVBC card. Card kicks off seven o'clock Saturday night from Charlestown Races, and the Cavada going to be the seventh race. We don't have the defending champ this year, no star of night, Ted. So where does that leave us? Well, uh, coincidentally, no star of night. It was a two-time West Virginia bred horse of the year and would have been the defending champ uh, for the Cavada this year. Uh, but we do have the same connections back with the uh, likely potential odds-on favorite in this race in the sky is falling. A three-year-old filly that Jeff Ronco trains and um, – Bernardo Boca Chica will, will be back aboard. You know, she's coming into it on a roll. She won the Sadie Hawkins last time out. Uh, wasn't overwhelmingly impressive, but she beat older Phillies and Mares, which is one thing uh, Star of Night did not do during her three-year-old campaign. Uh, she did later on in the year. But uh, sky, the sky's falling, you know, who kind of emerged last year on Breeders' Classics Night, pulling off the upset in the two-year-old Philly race. Um, has certainly not regressed a step this year. She's been the best three-year-old filly out there, and she's beaten older fillies in allowance races, and she beat them in the Sadie Hawkins last time out. So um, so Jeff doesn't have a star of night back, but he's going to have the uh, the favorite again with uh, the skies falling. Now, one of the uh, one of the likely contenders here in the Cavada is going to be Moonlit Shadow for Tim Graham's Moonlit Shadow. Led a long way in the Sadie Hawkins, tired to fourth, but just beaten a length and a little. So, really, kind of right there at the end, Ted. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Moonlit Shadow is uh, the full sister to Moonlit Song, who was uh, a past Cavado hero heroine a couple years ago. Um, you know, just was. A, a superb performer for uh, for Tim Grams and was winning all stakes race for him, you know, prior to run the running to love you coming around along and stealing the spotlight for the barn. Uh, Moonlit Shadow, uh, you know, hasn't quite lived up to what Moonlit Song did on the track, but she has fired a couple of good races. I mean, two starts back, uh, she won allowance race by eight lengths. Um, you know, it was not a bad effort in the Sadie Hawkins last time out. You know, I expect her to beat a speed again. Uh, in the class, uh, excuse me, in the Cavada, uh, um, doesn't seem to put it together every start like uh, you know, like Moonlit Song did her full sister. So uh, she's she's going to be right there, and at some point come and get her. Uh, and certainly a logical contender in here. One other horse who who comes out of the Sadie Hawkins is the third place finisher. That's Azura for Anthony Farrier, Farrier, the leading trainer this year at CT with 107 wins so far. Uh, what kind of chance do you give Azura? She's uh, nine to two on the morning line. Yeah, Azura has uh, been a consistent sort an entire career up there for Anthony Farrier. Ran a nice race in a Sadie Hawkins last time out. Um, you know, typically, I think the rail benefits horses going two turns because, you know, they can save ground through the first turn. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily going to help her. She does like to come from way out of it. Uh, there may be a point in the race where she's going to need running room and possibly not have it, uh, which you see a lot of times from, you know, from late closers. Um, but she's coming into it, you know, pretty well. You know, that, that effort in the Sadie Hawkins last time out was a nice third place finish. And again, you know, she's she's been consistent throughout her career. So I expect her to be on the board. Uh, I don't know if she's necessarily going to beat the skies falling or, or moonlit shadow this time around, but uh, you certainly can't toss. All right, That's Ted, sure. last thoughts here. Uh, picks for the Cavada. Well, again, you know, I, I hate to do it, um, you know, but they're going to be the picks I post on the on the website for, for this weekend. You know, uh, slight edge to the sky is falling. It's going to be probably a little lower than our 6-5 to five morning line. Uh, Moonlit Shadow, I think, will bounce back from the fourth place effort in the Sadie Hawkins and run second. Um, you know, a little torn between either Azura or Hesica for third and fourth right now. I mean, Hesica's fired some good races going two turns for Christy Petty. Um, probably a little a little short class-wise for this group, but, you know, she does do well at the two-turn distances up there. So might put her third, might put her fourth, and then the other one I would have would be Azura, you know, coming out of the Sadie Hawkins. So, um 
Yeah, no, no big surprises there. You know, I mean, you tend to either get odds on horses winning on this night or 30, 40 to one shots winning. So it's, it's always tough to find a, a middle ground, especially in the, the big races here. All right, that's going to do it. West Virginia Breeders Classics, Cavada Race 7, the top race for the Distaffers, and then the Sam Hoff West Virginia Breeders Classic Race 8. Ted Black, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on, Frank.